I invite you to join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for your reforming and transforming work in the church and in our lives. And we pray that work would continue in us and through us so others' lives can be reformed and transformed too by your grace. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, since it's Reformation Day, we need a little Reformation participation here. So here's what we're going to do. If you're proud to be a Lutheran, please stand as you're able. I'm serious. Stand if you're proud to be a Lutheran. If you're not a Lutheran or don't even know what a Lutheran is, or you're not able to stand, that's okay. It's all good. Now, if you're proud to be a Lutheran, I want you to pat yourself on the back and say, Thank God I'm a Lutheran. Okay? Next, I want you to turn to another Lutheran, give them a high five, and say, way to go, Lutheran. Way to go, Lutheran. Okay? Now, I want you to turn to another Lutheran and give them a fist bump and say, Martin Luther rocks. Okay, now that you got that out of your system, you can sit down. So the reason I did that is I I think there's times where we just need to poke a little fun at ourselves, right? Right? And if we're honest, there are times where we have a tendency to celebrate Reformation Day the same way baseball fans celebrate when their team wins the World Series. You've probably seen baseball fans and how they celebrate after their their team wins. They're high-fiving, they're hugging, they're fist-bumping and chest-bumping, and they're going on and on about the stars of the game and what they did that led to the victory. And they cheer, we won! We won the World Series! When I observe this behavior, I can't help but ask myself, we won? Really? What did you fans do to win the World Series, right? They weren't on the baseball field playing the game. They were either in their living room or at a sports bar gorging themselves and yelling at a TV screen. They had nothing to do with the outcome. They simply got to share in the victory that was won for them. Do you see the connection between a World Series winning team and how we as Lutherans can sometimes celebrate the Reformation, a victory that was won for the gospel and for us? Each year we gather on Reformation Day and we sing our team's fight song, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And it's our way of celebrating that we won, even though we weren't on the field when the contest occurred. We weren't even on the sofa because it happened 500 years before we were here. We had nothing to do with the outcome. We simply get to share in the victory that was won for the gospel and us. Now, that doesn't stop us from going on and on about the players in that time and uh, the big plays that they did that resulted in the victory for the gospel and for us, especially Martin Luther. But while baseball players like that kind of praise and attention, that's not something Martin Luther liked. He didn't want the focus on himself Luther wanted people to see he was simply a flawed human being that God happened to choose for that time and place to help turn the world's focus back to Jesus and back to the gospel. That's what we celebrate, not just on Reformation Day, but every day. Not what Martin Luther did, but what Christ did to win the victory over sin and death for us. Listen to these words once again from St. Paul as he wrote to the Christians in Ephesus because they give us a framework for how we celebrate this saving work, okay? For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In these spirit-inspired words, we see that our salvation requires a right understanding of the role of faith and works in our lives and in our salvation. So to make sure that you all have a proper understanding of the role of faith and works in your salvation, let me ask you a question. Are we saved by good works? Actually, we are. It was a trick question. Let me ask you the question this way. Are we saved by our good works? Okay. Are we saved by Christ's good works? Yeah. So we are saved by good works. They're just not ours, right? They're Christ's. Jesus is the one who did for us what we could not do for ourselves. He's the one that made a way to reconcile sinful human beings with a holy, righteous God. He knew we could never make it to first base on our own, much less cross home plate. 
because our sin constantly causes us to get called out. So Jesus came off the bench. He left heaven's throne and he came into this world to be our pinch hitter. Now think about this. He batted a thousand. He lived a perfect, sinless life in our place. And then he sacrificed himself on a cross and was called out in our place. Then he rose victoriously from the dugout to win the victory over sin and death for us. Those are the good works Jesus did to save us. And that's why we're gathered here to celebrate and worship today. We have the assurance that through faith in Jesus, we'll one day cross home plate safely and we'll join an eternal celebration of his victory. But besides gathering here for worship to celebrate what God has done to save us, there's another way we can celebrate what God has done to save us, and that is we can live a life of good works as a thankful response to the good works Jesus did to save us. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are God's workmanship. The Greek word translated here as workmanship can also be uh, translated as handiwork, work of art, masterpiece. Let me ask you, do you see yourself as God's handiwork? God's work of art? God's masterpiece? Or do you see yourself as a piece of work? (laughs) Doesn't matter ultimately how you see yourself or how others see you. What matters is how God sees you. And because of Jesus, God sees you as a masterpiece in the making. A masterpiece that he wants to have on display in this world so that others will be invited to know Jesus through you. You're a masterpiece in the making, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Created in Christ Jesus so that you can join him in his mission and invite others to know him and be saved too. As forgiven children of God, we get to celebrate God's undeserved grace that God has shown to us by sending a Savior. We also get to share that undeserved grace with others, too. And as we do, what we come to realize is the Reformation isn't just some historical event that happened 500 years ago. It's an ongoing event that's taking place as God continues to work through us so that others' lives can be reformed by his grace, too. And as we do that, we can look forward to the day when we're going to get to share in the joy of seeing how God worked through us so that other people could cross home plate safely into heaven too. Now that is a victory we're celebrating. Amen.